Good morning, church. Happy New Year. Happy Epiphany. It's a good, fun, great weekend. I'm glad to see you. Uh, I'm glad to see you before the snow hits in the next couple days. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're exercising caution when you're out this upcoming week. Be smart. Don't do anything crazy. Just stay home if you have to. Uh, we have some good announcements this morning. Our first one, which is we have a new arrival in the church. Uh, Ruth Ann Hamilton welcomed a great granddaughter on December 29th named Charlotte Marie Goodenbauer. So, congratulations. Uh, one event that we'd like to uh, mention, the January 21st, so that's, I think, two weeks from today, we're having our trivia night. So, we would love for you to come out. Quiz master, right here. We're going to have a good time. You don't think so? Who said that? Is that you, Tim? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, trivia night, two weeks from tonight, 6 o'clock, come on out. On the 28th, so three weeks from today, we'll have our congregational meeting right after the service. So please intend to stay after that to uh, look at the stuff that the session has approved and the budget and all the reports and all that good, fun stuff. Let's see. Oh, also today, after church, we are unhanging of the greens. So if you would like to stay and uh, come and hang out with some folks, have some good fellowship, and uh, take the greens down from the church, uh, we would love for you to come and hang out with us. Right, Karen? All right. <laughs> also this morning, we are, we are grieving for the families from Perry, Oklahoma, or Perry Iowa, uh, this week after they have uh, endured another senseless act of violence this week. So make sure that uh, we're in prayer for those families and a Perry, Perry this week. Any other announcements or joys or concerns or anybody that we can pray for for you this week? Okay, so my grandma is currently in, um, she has cancer, stage four, and so the church decided to make this quilt for her, and I would like to ask that um, as I pass it around, everyone ties one of the strings. <laughs> Sorry, I only have one hand. <laughs> Upside down, kitty. <laughs> turn around. for Hermione's mom, Tammy Norris, says, you pass around this quilt, please uh, tie one of the strings together so we can give to Hermione's mom. Any other prayer requests, or joys, or concerns this week? All right, well, let's continue with our morning worship.
Arise, shine, for your light has come. Tell the good news throughout the earth. Come and adore the Savior of the nations. God of glory, you send Jesus among us as the light of the world. You reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of for sin and pour out the gifts of your spirit that, forgiven and renewed, we may show forth your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ. Now let us take some time for silent personal confession. saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. By Christ's mercy, we have been born anew into a new life of hope, becoming, for those who would follow, an example of God's patience and trust. 
to the God of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Let's all affirm our beliefs together with the recitation of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from then he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace in Christ be with you all. We now invite you to turn to your neighbor to pass the peace or to welcome to worship and wonderful greetings. Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Are you awake?
Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning with open ears and an open heart. Help us to see what you are wanting to show us today with your word. In your name we pray. Amen. I would like to invite all the children to come forward, please. All right, I got a surprise for you. What is it? Milk? Chocolate milk. What? Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. No way. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. What do we think we do with these two things? What do you think this is? Milk. You are correct. That is chocolate sauce. How do you know that? Because it's right on the label. Do you guys drink this every day? Are you sure you don't drink the chocolate syrup straight from the bottle? No. Is that something that I just do? But well, you do that. You can. Well, I do that. I thought about it. You can put it in the milk to make it chocolate milk. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Well. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. All right. Well, since you say so, Miles. Okay. What we're going to do today? A little object lesson. Okay. So we're going to pretend. That this milk is us, okay? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. This milk is us, okay? Oh, no. So here we come. We're coming to church, and we sit down in church. And what do we do when we come to church? Sit down. Yeah, we listen for God, right? And God, or Jesus, is going to be chocolate syrup today. Oh, no. Jesus' word is sweet, right? Don't <laughs> You get it? All right, now, when we come to church, we're sitting, and then we hear God's word pour into us. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's a lot. That won't turn into chocolate. Can I take a drink for myself? Yeah. Don't do that at home. Now, now. We have chocolate milk now, don't we? No, no. we don't. Wait. You have no, to if, fill I, it up. if I drank this, it would taste like chocolate milk, right? No. It doesn't taste like chocolate milk. You have to shake it or spill it. Wait, so you're telling me that we can't just come to church and hear God's word? We have to do something else? Yeah. You have what? To listen. You have to listen and. Learn. We have to. Do something, right? Yeah. All right, let's see here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God, it's chocolate milk. You put your foot in. Now, do you think there's any milk taste left in this? No. Yeah. There's quite a bit of chocolate in there. Yeah, it's a lot of All right, let's try it. Yeah. Tastes like chocolate. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, all right. All right, so what we can learn from this, what we can learn from this is that when we come to church, we can hear God's word, and we can hear God's word be poured into us, but at the end of the day, we got to do something, right? We got to show other people that we can be God's people for others, right? We got to stir it up inside us, amen? All right, now, who wants a shot of chocolate? All right. Okay. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you, sir. Give me I'll five. Who I'll wants to grab the cart? Go. Eat. All three of you. Go ahead. All right. It is Can Do Sunday. So if you brought some perishable items, the kids will be bringing in the cart here in a second. All right. Wow. That didn't even hurt. That's because you're strong. Oh. Help get the food. Why don't you go help me get the food? All right.
Those who stand firm during testing are blessed. They are tried and true. They will receive the life God has promised to, the, to those who love him as their, as their reward. No one who is tested should say, God is tempting me. This is because God is not tempted by any form of evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Everyone is tempted by their own cravings. They are lured away and enticed by them. Once those cravings conceive, they give birth to sin. And when sin grows up, it gives birth to death. Don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good gift, every perfect gift, comes from above. These gifts come down from the Father, the creator of the heavenly lights, in whose character there is no change at all. He who chose to give birth by his true word, and here is the result. We are talking like, wait, wait, we are, we are like the first crop from the heaven, from the harvest of everything he has created. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters. Everyone should be quick to listen, show to speak, and slow to grow angry. This is because an angry person doesn't produce God's righteousness. Therefore, with humility set aside all moral filth and growth of wickedness and welcome the world and welcome the word planted deep inside you, the very word that is able to save you. You must be doers of the word and not only hearers who misled themselves, those who hear but don't do but don't do the word, are like those who look at their faces in the mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget, but they put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they misled themselves. Their devotion is worthless. True devotion, the kind that is pure and faultless before God the Father, is this, to care for orphans and, and widows in their difficulties and to keep the world from, containing, from contaminating us. Thank you, Rose. You know, they say that you should never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. I am one that enjoys going to the grocery store. And sometimes when I say to my wife, can I come? She says, no. Because <laughs> she knows that I am like a child in a candy store, literally, picking and choosing many different items that are definitely not healthy for me. For Christmas this year, my wife got me one of those turn crank block cheese shredders. And the other night, she told me to run over to the dollar store to get a block of cheese and some chicken broth, I believe it was. So naturally, I walked over. And then I came back with chicken broth, a block of cheese, some sweet tea, a box of Little Debbie's, and some Taco Bell Chipotle sauce, because you never know when you're going to need that. It is clear, when it comes to being fed, I'm doing okay. But what about spiritually fed? Do you know how hard it is sometimes to be spiritually fed? How do we stay hungry for the Word of God? Now, I've only been in ordained ministry now for about two months, but I can tell you from a youth ministry standpoint, it is extremely easy to veer off the path of Christ. So often I would find myself planning events, talking to kids and their parents, convincing teens that answering machines actually existed, and actually having a conversation that Henry was the long term for Hank and William was the long name for Bill. I promise you I had that exact conversation. When this happens, at the end of the day, sometimes all I wanted to do was go home and just sit. I didn't want to be in the Word anymore. I didn't want to do any more church work. I was done with church on those days. But what I hadn't done was taken time spiritually for myself. I hadn't spent any time with our Creator and allowed God to pour into me. I mean, let's face it. How can we pour into people if we are empty? 
Our vehicles cannot move without gas. Our stomachs growl without food. And we cannot be faithful Christians without a steady diet of the Word of God. In today's Scriptures, the entire first chapter of James is dedicated to building up this faith and endurance. Today we look at and read verses 12 through 27, but if we go back a little bit even further, we see that James is giving us what we need to know and to do in order to be able to give to others. In verses 2 and 3, James states, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And this is interesting because James is telling us to welcome difficulty. Imagine, though, your thought process. If you welcome difficult situations in order to test your faith and endurance to God. Now, this doesn't mean that in difficult situations that you can't be happy. No, your difficult feelings are definitely warranted. The sadness and the anger that you might have, that's okay. But God wants us to be able to, in the midst of those depths, to be able to rise up and endure. In those situations, God wants us to turn to Christ and to the Word and feed that into ourselves and our souls so that we will always be looking to God in hard times. Verse 12 of chapter 1 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. And afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love Him. When I think about how to keep being fed, how to keep my endurance up, I can get frustrated easily because I feel that sometimes it's just too hard. Sometimes I just want to be angry in a situation. Sometimes I want to just do what I want to do and not pour into anyone else. I'm human. When my wife gets mad at me, which sometimes is often, I always try to make her laugh. And she will say, just let me be mad for once. But what James wants us to know is that we always must be searching for God in those situations. We must not let our sinful thoughts take over because those thoughts are what dry us up on the inside. And the picture that I see in my mind is when we're feeding ourselves the Word, we are adding wood to the fire that is burning inside us. A few weeks ago I mentioned that we shouldn't let the fires go out. And by staying in the Word, we are feeding ourselves and the fire burns hotter. At the end of seminary, back in May of 22, I was done. I didn't want to do school anymore. I'd gone to school for eight straight years. And once I graduated, I instantly stopped studying. I didn't open a book. I didn't read scripture much. I stopped looking at all the languages. I wanted nothing to do with it. However, those few days turned into a few weeks, and those few weeks turned into a few months. And by the time I knew it, by the end of the summer, I had not cracked a single book. I had stopped feeding myself. Instead of looking at studying the Word as feeding myself spiritually, I looked at that as a job. A job that I wanted to desperately finish because I was insane with stress. Before I moved to New Jersey, I walked into my mentor, Pastor Matthew's office, back in Illinois, and I said to him, I need some help. I hadn't been feeling great, and I was approaching almost everything in life with a cynical attitude. The point where I felt that I needed to say something because I just wasn't interested in anything. <clears throat> After I dismissed a bunch of those feelings, I felt guilty. 
I had this feeling inside that wasn't good, and I needed to chat about it. And he told me, he asked me one question. How are you doing in your devotions, and how are you spending your time with God? And to me, it was like a deer in headlights. I said, I haven't been. And everything changed moving forward. I knew that I needed to replenish the Word within myself. After that meeting, I felt better. I knew that I needed more time with Jesus in order to keep me sane and keep my endurance going. I realized that that break from school was actually starting to hurt because during school, they teach you how to form a habit. How to form a habit to stay in the Word. They taught us that without actually teaching us that. What I've done differently now is that when I go home from here, when I go home and plop myself on the couch, I've built the habit of going to other church services for my colleagues and my friends who are also pastors. And I listen to them because that helps me. I am their parishioner for that Sunday afternoon. Because I noticed that the longer I stay out of God's Word, the worse my attitude got. God was telling me, Toby, you're running on empty. You need to fill yourself up with me once again. But in James, in verse 22, it also says, but don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the Word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in the mirror and then walking away completely forgetting what you saw. We have to put this mindset into our daily lives. We have to treat everything that comes to us as a gift from God. Even the bad stuff, then we have to put those things to good use to help feed others the Word. And when we use that to give to others, we are being present for God. We cannot just take God in only. We have to be able to follow the good to free flow from our bodies. God wants us to feed ourselves with God's Word, but also wants humanity to never stop feeding on the Word and put it into practice. I am convinced that if I had fed myself during that time away from school, I think that my positivity would have been better and my cynical attitude may not have existed. Learning to stay grounded and stick with great spiritual habits is basically just that. We have to learn how to do it. Being spiritually fed isn't meant to be turned off. But there is an off switch in all of us. We all know what it's like when we eat something so satisfying that we say, And that hits the spot. The Word of God has that power. When we feed ourselves the Word, we have those moments of feeling, yes. Earlier this week, I went to M's Coffee Shop and tried the blueberry scone. And one of those turned into four. (laughs) And I sat down and promptly finished it and quickly realized I need another. Sitting there, it got me thinking about how the Word of God has to give us that feeling too. The Word of God is so good that we need to always learn to seek it and never be afraid to go get more. Alleluia. Amen.
friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from the north and the south and from the east and the west to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in Him to share the feast that He has prepared. We give you thanks to the Lord Jesus on the night before He died, took bread, and giving given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, This is My body, given for you. Take and eat. And do this in remembrance of Me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in My blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering in your boundless love, Lord, reveal to us in Jesus Christ, we break the bread and share the cup and give ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. I would like to now invite the serving elders to come forward. And remember, when you get the, be- get the bread, go ahead and take it. When we get the cup together, we'll drink it together.
cup of Christ. Let us pray. We give thanks and praise, O God, that you have fed us with your mercy and poured out your spirit in this place. Continue to nourish and fill us each day that we may live as your beloved people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our, our Lord. Amen. At this time, friends, let us magnify the Lord, rejoicing in the one who scatters the proud, lifts up the lowly, and fills the hungry with good things. At this time, let us bring our tithes and offerings to God. All we have and all that we are comes from you, Lord. Teach us to receive each day as a gift and to acknowledge you as Lord in every aspect of our lives. May we worship you using the time, talents, and treasures you have entrusted to us. Each day is yours. 
you, Jesus Christ, are king. Be seated. Please join me in our responsive prayers to the people and our pastoral prayer is in your bulletin. We approach God in prayer not as strangers, but as beloved children baptized in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we come to you to pray for our loved ones who are homebound. Help them to see the love that you give. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we come to you for our own members. We pray for each and every one of them who are going through times of sickness, trials, hurt, and grief. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we come to you in prayer for our world. We come to you in prayers for our friends in the Middle East. In this new year, help us to see the miracles, your love, and your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask these things in your name and your name only. Help us to always remember you and to always be in prayer for the people around us. And in this time, Lord, let us recite the prayer that you taught us. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, the Lord accepts us into God's service. We are strengthened in God's Spirit, and we are worthy of God's call. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.